touch me, touch me, touch me. I like the way she fuck me, fuck me, fuck me, fuck me. Hit it, hit it, hit it, drop. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Drop. What's good with you too? This your boy CJ. And this your girl Rena. Make, Make sure y'all subscribe CJ and Rena. Alright, today we got a reaction video on Geography Now. Ethiopia. Guys, don't forget to donate the bottom so we keep going, going, going. I know you're ready. I'm ready, ready. I'm ready. Let's get it. Hey everybody, say hi to Stamri. She is a real Ethiopian. Hi Sam everyone. Hey. Hey. Stamri, are you ready to make Ethiopia proud? So ready. Let's do it. <laughs> It's time to learn geography now. Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie and we have reached Ethiopia. This is a big one, okay? Ethiopia is like one of the big shots of Africa. Yeah. You won't find any place like this anywhere else on Earth. No, it. you will not. There's so much to cover in so little time, so let's get started. Okay, so you guys know how much I love administrative subdivisions. I felt like I was a kid in a candy store when I was doing the China episode. That being said, with <laughs> Ethiopia, it's like we just won the golden ticket to the chocolate factory. Wow. Let's dive in. <laughs> As it borders six other countries, Ethiopia is the world's most populous landlocked sovereign state located in the Horn of Africa. Prior wow. to 1996, the country used to have 13 provinces, but then after a bunch of internal drama and conflict, they redrew the lines, and now Ethiopia is divided into nine ethnic-based regions, each with their own autonomy and extended legislative power under the constitution. Technically, under Article 39, they each reserve the right to secede from Ethiopia if they desire. However, mm -hmm. it's a little debatable as to how much this clause actually applies to them. The capital Addis Ababa, which translates to New Flower, lies in the central heart of the country and acts as its own separate entity apart from any region, as does the second largest city, Diradawa. These are what you call charter cities. They bypass the regional level and govern themselves independently, only under the Ethiopian constitution. Which ah. is strange because Harari is considered a region, even though area-wise it's smaller than the charter cities and has the smallest population as well, at only around 200 12,000 people. Which is even stranger because the ethnic regions are further divided into zones, which are further divided into Waredas. And some of these Waredas refuse to be affiliated wow. with a certain region that they lie in and have decided to go rogue. They're called Special Waredas and have a second tiered level of autonomy, and there are ten of them, half of which lie in the Southern Nations, Nationalities, and Peoples region, sometimes referred to as the SNNPR. Which brings us to that place. As the third most populous region, this aptly named area of wow. Ethiopia has more wow. tribes and people groups than anywhere else. Most regions have less than 10 main people groups that inhabit their boundaries. This place has about 45. And I think that's about it with uh, yeah. administrative divisions. Oh wait, land disputes. Ah, yeah, okay, uh, here we go. There's a Lemmy Triangle all the way in the south by Kenya and Sudan. Then there's the Ogaden dispute with Somalia, and finally technically there's that Jabal al Tair Island dispute with Eritrea and Yemen in the Red Sea, even though Yemen kind of took it over, but then that volcano exploded and destroyed half of everything. Look it up guys, I'm on a time crunch. Uh -oh. Oh, very wow. quickly, the largest air force are, of course, the capital Addis Ababa, Bole International, Dredewa, and Magale in the north. One thing that definitely makes Ethiopia stick out, though, would have to be the fact that they are the only African country to successfully avoid ever being colonized by any European outside forces. The Italians tried, but then they held their ground and fought back relentlessly. I forgot about Libya. No, oh, and Libya tried too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But they're not European. That's yeah. true. This is unexpectedly unprecedented, but in return, kind of gave them a little respect. Yeah, Ethiopia held their ground, right? There isn't a single place place that embodies the entire soul of okay. Ethiopia, but rather the country is speckled with unique sites that each tell their own distinct piece of the Ethiopian story. They have more UNESCO heritage sites than any other country in Africa. Gunfire around, just to name a few notable spots. The Harara Hyena Town, where you can feed wild hyenas. The mysterious wow. Tiastela stone carvings. The Bete Gorgis of Lalivela Church, like hewn what? out of single rock. The Chapel of the Tablet, where it's believed to hold the incredible ancient Ark of the Covenant. Guarded by virgins who cannot leave the building. The Obelisk of Aksum ah. from the ancient Aksum Kingdom. The indigenous travel villages of Omo Valley and the famous castle of Gondar. Yeah, and we haven't even mentioned what the landscape looks like yet. <laughs> this is where the real adventure begins. Oh, wow, yes. <laughs> Ethiopia's land is shrouded with extremes on so many levels, and to really get a good look at it, you kind of have to understand the tectonic makeup. Like mentioned in the Eritrea episode, the Horn of Africa is located on the tri-point convergence of the Arabian, African, and Somali plates, and Ethiopia is caught right in the middle of all of it. The Somali plate isn't so much of a plate, but rather a crack that didn't finish cracking, and today grinds wow. across the African plate horizontally wow. in what is called a transform motion. This essentially splits the country into two portions, the western and eastern Ethiopian highlands, also known as the Ethiopian Plateau and the Amar Mountain. 
Ethiopian. The Ethiopian highlands are the largest continuous mountain range in Africa, which stretch north to south and comprise a great diversity of terrain depending on the region. Climate-wise, it basically goes like this. The east is hot, and the west is cool. Huh, that's simple. As mentioned before, the northeast really corner sad. by the border of Eritrea contains the Danakil Depression, where you find Dolol, the hottest that's human beautiful. settlement on Earth, with average annual temperatures holding around 41 degrees Celsius. Most of this hauntingly beautiful area is uninhabitable, with some areas fuming with toxic gases coming from the boiling geothermal salt ponds. Nonetheless, people still come here to mine for salt on a regular basis. Oh, and if you're lucky, you can witness blue lava flowing from some of the minor volcanoes in the area. Blue lava? Yeah, that's blue. Wow, blue. I didn't even mm -hmm. know that existed. Close by, you can also find Erta Ale, the most active volcano in Ethiopia, with two lava lakes continuously shining orange, sometimes referred to as the gates of hell. Nope, I have the real one, and mine's better. Head inland, and we hit the breathtaking ah, Simeon Mountains, wow. where the tallest yeah. peak, Rash Desene, is found. Here you can find Lake Tana, the largest lake in Ethiopia, and the source of the Blue Nile, which makes up a little loop de loop and then flows northward into the White Nile in Sudan. Head more south, and the landscape suddenly becomes dramatically more lush and green with the highest concentration of vegetation in the country. The West and South are home to the largest portions of agricultural plots where various grains, vegetables, and spices and herbs are grown, including, once again, teff, the national grain of Ethiopia, which is used to make the same injera bread I talked about in the Eritrea video, and this is what it looks like, and it's so good. All right, crew, come on over. All right, lunch break. We're eating right now. Lunch break, come on. Yes, yes. If you've never had Ethiopian food, you're missing out on life. The land is also teeming with numerous species of animals like gazelles, antelope, kudu, cheetahs, ibex, baboons, and a hotbed for over 500 species of birds that either inhabit or migrate through the plateaus year-round. However, the national animal is the lion. It was even put on the former flag of Ethiopia when it was under the last emperor, which has a pretty interesting story behind you know. it, which we will cover in... Okay, let's just dispel the myth already. When you hear the word Ethiopia, everyone still kind of thinks of this. And yes, during the conflict years, there was more prevalent. However, mainstream Ethiopia is nothing like that. No. No. One thing you have to understand is that Ethiopia not only has ancient history, but prehistoric history. Yes. As in, like, some of the oldest specimens of modern-day humans have been found in Ethiopia. Yeah, labeling it as one of the origin regions of human emergence. Remember Lucy? Oh. Yeah. Ethiopia. Ethiopia. First of all, now Ethiopia is incredibly diverse with over 80 different ethnic groups and tribes living in the country. However, a few of them stand out and dominate the rest. About a third of the population is Oromo and about 30% are Amara. At less than 10% each are other groups like Somali, Tigrayan, Sidama, and the rest are huge conglomerations of over 70 different people groups. As mentioned in the Eritrea video, Ethiopia is unique that along with Eritrea, they have an Abisha population. In a nutshell, Abishas are Africans that have Semitic roots down the line to their ancestry. As wow. they of the ancient land of Kush. As the story goes, Ethiopians claim that they are descendants of the historical King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, who gets a quick shout out in the Bible. Long story short, she had a son from Solomon named Menelik, who became the first emperor of Ethiopia. DNA tests have shown that most Abisha identified individuals have partial genetic markers and traces that come from the same ones that are typically found in Jews and Arabs. This is partially the reason why Abisha people look a little different from the rest of what most presume a sub-Saharan African individual is portrayed at. Oh, and they love their hair, right, yes. Sammy Ethiopians? You know. Yes, they have one of the most intriguing, unique designs wow. in the world that can't be found anywhere else, and they just flash their natural follicles. Amharic women even have a fascinating hair whipping dance that looks like this. Nonetheless, that is only the Abisha of Ethiopia. Yeah, once again, there are over 80 ethnic groups that are radically different from the others. Oh, and once again, just like Eritrea, the Amharic peoples also use the only indigenous African script, yeah, the Fidel, yeah. or the Fidel? Uh, Fidel. Yeah. Fidel. Yeah. Fidel. Yeah. Or Giz alpha syllabary. Otherwise, almost all the other people groups in Ethiopia write with the Latin-based script like Oromo and Somali. Speaking of which, the Oromo, which are slightly the largest group, speak a Cushitic-based language closer to Somali and Afar, which is completely unintelligible to Amharic. The country has ties to all three Abrahamic religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. About 63% are Christians, mostly Ethiopian Orthodox and Protestant. Muslims make up about a third, and the rest are either Jew and other indigenous faith. Yeah, you heard that right, Jews. Ethiopia is home to to one of the only black Jewish populations. There's a dispute that the Lemba of South Africa are also black Jews, but that's another story. Back when it was the Kingdom of Aksum, Ethiopia became one of the first nations to accept Christianity. And as tradition holds, Jesus' disciple Matthew traveled there to share the gospel, and Philip the Evangelist baptized.
baptized the first Ethiopian. The Harare region of Ethiopia is also regarded as the fourth holiest site in Islam, as it has 82 mosques and over 100 shrines. But one thing, Samri, that really sticks out would have to be the Ethiopian calendar, right? Yeah. That's so pretty unique. weird. Yeah. The Ethiopian calendar is about seven years and three months behind the standard Gregorian calendar that most other nations follow. As of right now in 2016, the year is 2008 in Ethiopia. Really? It's yeah. like wow. 2008 in Ethiopia right now. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> Very similar to the Coptic one, the calendar uses 12 months with 30 days each and a 13th what? epigominal month made up of either five or six days depending on the year. New Year's Day typically lands on September 11th or the 12th depending on the year. Throughout yeah. most of their history, Ethiopia was under kingdoms and empires, the last one ending with Emperor Haile Selassie. However, his son Amha kind of ruled technically for like one year until the communist Derg community came in and then they ended the monarchy. Side note, this is where the tension with Eritrea pretty much started. The Derg was deposed and now they operate under a federal parliamentary republic. Fun side note, Emperor Haile Selassie is still to this day revered by Rastafarians as their messiah, even though he was quoted for saying, I am not God. Samri, I'm just curious, like, what do Ethiopians think about the whole Rastafarian thing and Haile Selassie and all that stuff? What do they think about it? They think they're pretty cool. I mean, they love our country and they have a portion of land there, and so they provide to our con economy. Yeah, you can imagine how they felt when he actually visited the country in the 60s. Speaking of outside relations... <laughs> Ethiopia is kind of a big shot. They've earned their prestige in the world stage and now they have a lot of people to connect with. No surprise, the US and China are the biggest overseas investors in Ethiopia. The US gives the most aid and has military alliances and China is the largest importer. They have both relations with Israel and Palestine. After Israel became a state, thousands of Ethiopians flocked over and today there are more Ethiopian black Jews living in Israel than in Ethiopia. Palestine is also recognized as a state and both have their own embassies. Turkey has ties from way back in the Ottoman Empire times and Russia it used to be a really good friend back when the Communist Derg Committee took over for about 20 years. Now things are kind of like eh between them. Their best friends, however, would probably be Egypt, Djibouti, and to a lesser extent maybe Sudan. Egypt shares an ancient history with Ethiopia for thousands of years and the Nile Basin plays a major role in their cooperation. Wow. Djibouti is kind of like their only way out to the Red Sea and business between them is crucial for Ethiopia's trade sector. Sudan is kind of like a major oil provider and gateway to the Mediterranean for them despite the border conflict. They still have relatively good relationships. In conclusion, Ethiopia is kind of like a big deal. I mean, some of the earliest peoples ever recorded came from here, let alone communities and civilizations. They avoided European colonization and have a unique, vibrant, diverse background found nowhere else, and yet somehow they're able to hold on to every region together and become one proud people of rich heritage. Yeah. What do you think, Samri? Was that, was that accurate? Was that... Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Yes. Thank you. Stay tuned. After nearly two years of doing Geography Now, we finally go back to Oceania, and Fiji is coming up next. Okay, everything was nice. Only thing that threw me off is when he said 9-11 and then he made it goes to this crazy scream and it sounded like crashing. It was like a weird motion. It was. It was like a damn. I was like, oh crap. Even though I knew you might was trying to put that piece to saying, oh, it was a bad thing to say at the time. But the crashing made it seem like... <laughs> We knew what happened. Like, crap. All right, and the fact that they have 13 months on their calendar, each have 30 days, and also they're in 2008. No, right now it's 2019, so they'll be in 2011. Yeah, 2011. Wow. So I guess they'll be in 2012 next year of 2020 here. Wow. So that's crazy. That's kind of everybody can keep a calculation on Ethiopians of how they will uh, keep growing in a slower but still steady pace like we are. <laughs> guys, make sure y'all check this video out in the description below, comment below, and also donate below so we can keep going, going, and going. Make sure you guys subscribe to CJ and Rena. Like always, guys. Peace. Bye. I like the way she touch me, touch me, touch me, touch me. I like the way she fuck me, fuck me, fuck me, fuck me. Hit it, hit it, hit it, drop, hit it, hit it, hit it, drop.